guys, how's it going? So Aaron and I are out here getting ready to plant a new tree. So we are planting it in that garden that's shaped like a triangle that's kind of right out in our driveway. In fact, I'll start walking out there. Kind of wanted to stand in the shade as long as I could. It's a nice sunny day. Um, but we had a plum tree in the corner of that garden that was like kind of split almost in half and half of it would bloom and half of it wouldn't. And the half that was sick looked like I don't know, it just kept losing a bunch of leaves and branches. So anyway, we had that removed. So we are getting ready to plant a new plum in its place and it's beautiful. This is the Triangle Garden and I love it so much. We have the fountain in there, the most beautiful arbor with sweet autumn clematis that's just looking gorgeous. And this brand new plum tree that is just, it's huge and it's beautiful. And the reason why Erin is out here is because it's heavy and it's massive. So let's take a look from inside. Okay, so anyway, this is the corner right here. Um, boxwoods need a little bit of help. I've been kind of pruning out some dead sections. I think I'm gonna try to recuperate these. Do these have water? These. I am actually not sure. Do you wanna test it real quick? Sure. So Aaron's opening the Ratio app. It's hooked to our Ratio system, right? Yeah, this is one of those bad areas that's connected to the sprinklers though. We have a few more flower bed zones that are still connected to our sprinklers in the back garden, which is no good. We need to figure out how we can get those separated. We've done so much work, not we. Aaron has done so much work on our irrigation system to get it all lined out. And so far it's working really well, but it's still a work in progress. We're still working out a few kinks here and there, but I'm excited to get this thundercloud plum in here. So this tree grows 20 feet by 20 feet. So it's much bigger than the last plum that was in here. And I chose that on purpose because this is clearly a very sunny, hot spot. I mean, like right behind me, there's just gravel. There's gravel in front of me, gravel driveway. Um, and it's just a really hot area. So I thought it would be nice to have a little bit of a bigger canopy over here so we could have a little shade. A couple other things about the thunder clouds. They're a zone four through nine and we garden in a zone five. So it should be plenty winter hardy enough. And they've got these gorgeous kind of bronze-ish purple leaves. Yeah, look at that color, especially like contrasting the boxwoods there. And they have single pink blooms in the spring. So I think this will be a really pretty view. Like as you're coming down the driveway, you'll see this big tree full of blooms in the spring. Ooh, we got a cloud. That one, <laughs> one, one, yes. one, the one yes. cloud. Yes, shade. All right, so Aaron just turned on this drip zone and it does look like there's some water. Um, I see it coming out of the tube down here as well. So he, whoa, hold on, let me back up. I wanna get out of the way. He's gonna pull up the tubing and see where it goes. These are coming out, right? Yeah, I think I just explained that. If I didn't just explain that, these roses are coming out. So he's not being super gentle. Um, so we need to go get some more tools and uh, some gloves no, it's maybe. Not, it's not under the rose, Aaron. Oh, this is where it comes from. Look, that's where it comes from. It tees right here. Oh. There's black poly. Well, let's go get some more tools so that we can cut I think, things. And... I think what we need if we're gonna start over is we're gonna cut this half inch poly right here and put a new tee in it and we'll create a new grid for this flower bed. Cool. All of our like 15 minute projects turn into two hour projects. Ugh. I also wanted to talk about the fact that we are planting this tree pretty much in the same spot as the last plum. So that was a pretty small tree and they ground that stump out like really deep. So we'll be able to dig our hole and put the new plum in there and the new plum's roots will find their way around. It wasn't, like I said, it was a really small tree. So its root system is probably not really extensive. It's not always that easy though. We may have to, in fact, I'm gonna grab the pruning saw just in case we run into any errant roots. Hey, how's it going today, hmm? Have any of you laid an egg today? Where's the other one? Let's find her. There she is, I see her out there. All right, you freeloading bunch of hens. I haven't had eggs in two days, what's going on? I had to check on the chickens really quick. All right, just gonna cut it right here. We're gonna see if this is the water source or not. If it's not, water's gonna shoot from this side. If it is, it'll shoot from this side and it'll shoot at me. <laughs> it's not gonna so, shoot at you. You sure? Yeah. We'll see who's right and who's wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Yeah, it's coming from here, Aaron. The black? Yeah, it's coming from this side. Oh, would you look at that? You better include this in the video, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. I, was, I admit I was wrong. Oh, sweet. 
sweet victory. Okay, so now we could run a new drip tubing okay. if we wanted to not have that anymore. Uh -huh. um, that way we'd know that it's working properly. I think that's smart. And we need to create a new grid anyway because once these roses are out, I want to plant up this little corner a little bit differently and I want there to be drip here. Okay. So I think that would be good. So what I'm going to do now, since we're going to create our new line from that black poly and this one is no good anymore, I'm just going to cut it off, kind of just hiding under the boxwoods and we'll just leave it there. No one will even know it exists. And I think I'm going to go ahead and dig these out, these roses. Um, they're kind of mangy and they never really bloom that well. So I don't even want to like give them to a friend or family. That's what we normally do. I just think that we'll replace them with something better. But I'm going to dig those out now so they won't be in our way with the new drip tubing. All right, the space has been cleared out. Um, so now I think we're going to actually plant this tree before we run the drip tubing. Um, just because this is such a huge hole we have to dig, I don't really want there to be tubing in our way. But it looks good already, just having it all cleared out. We've got some mulch sitting over here ready to go when we're all through with the whole project. But this is a nice new little area that we'll get to plant up. Aaron went to go grab the bolt cutters so we can get this thing out of its cage. Got the bolt cutters? Nice. So that hole was pretty easy to dig. We didn't run into any roots at all, which is awesome. So now we are gonna fill the hole with water about halfway with some Biotone starter fertilizer and then we will plant the tree. Just real quick about the Biotone starter fertilizer. I mean, you guys know that we use it every time we plant something new on this property because what it does is it helps establish and grow roots really fast. And since we're planting this big tree in the early, it's not quite fall yet, but we're really close. Um, we want this tree to establish itself as quickly as possible since we're going to be heading into winter. And really the rule of thumb is if you can plant your stuff anywhere from six to eight weeks before you get a frost, then um, that plant usually has enough time to uh, establish enough and grow some roots. So anyway, I think we're what, six to eight weeks or so probably from our first What's frost. What's our first frost date? Do you so know? Do sometime in beginning of October. Oh. No, not beginning of October, November. <laughs> oh yeah, so we're a long way away. <laughs> yeah, I think we're a good six weeks. You never know though, every single year is different, but the Biotone helps speed up the process. So anyway, I just wanted to make sure to let you know that. All right, so now we're gonna tackle getting this thing out. So if we find that bolt cutters are, what, the only way to get this out? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> And it's really easy. Once you get this cage cut off, you can just kind of roll the tree right into place. We'll have to check out the root system first. See if we need to break it up at all. Usually, can you cut the string maybe right here? Do you think this will cut the string? Um, oh no, it cuts metal. There we go. Just wanted to see the root system. It looks really good, really healthy, and it's actually not root bound like I thought it was going to be. I mean a little bit. So we'll take our fingers and rough up this root system just a little bit, but it's looking really nice. Oh. <laughs> okay, let me look at it from the front. So we got it in its hole and we don't like where it's placed. <laughs> What we did is we centered it for this area because I was going to plant three things right around the base of it. Um, but when you stand out there, like when you're where Aaron's at, let me show you. When you stand out here, it looks great. Like you can see the trunk, there's distinction. But let me show you what it looks like when I move toward the house. This is the view toward from the house. It looks like it's hiding behind the arbor. So we think we need to move it out right here. <sighs> You got it. See, 
see how much better that looks? A little distance away from the arbor really made a huge difference. And I still have enough room to where it doesn't look awkward being too like put into the corner and I can plant some things. Like, can you imagine meteor shower verbena coming up out of that space next year? I think that would look amazing. All right, so now we're gonna run the new drip in this area and we'll show you what that looks like when we've got it all set up. So we're gonna actually wait to mulch. We're gonna let this zone run a few times just so we can see what the water coverage looks like. That way, if we need to add more drip tubing or if we need to take some out, we can do that really easily. Also take a picture after you're done running your drip. Like I'm gonna, today, I'm gonna grab my phone, take a picture of what it looks like. So if I ever need to come in and add extra or take some out or make any repairs, I can do that um, a little bit more easily because I'll kind of know where all the drip tubing is at. Um, and we're just gonna use a shredded bark mulch. I'll show you that bag in a minute and then today I use the biotone starter fertilizer for the next couple of seasons I'll be following it up with tree tone uh, which I use once or twice a season on newly planted trees like the season after I've planted them I always start with the biotone and then use the appropriate fertilizer the next time I fertilize um, and I typically don't fertilize trees that are big and established unless I see some kind of issue going on it's just on the young ones that we do that and this is the mulch right here it's just a bark mulch. It's kind of a, like kind of chunky, but it's like a finer chunk. So I think this is perfect. Aaron just watered it in. I think I'm gonna put a slow drip hose on it right now, just for a little while, just so I make sure it's really well saturated. Uh, and now I get to think of what to put in here. Like it would be kind of neat to maybe put a little bench in here and have some pretty things planted behind it. It just helps so much to have everything gone. And then I can visualize how we can make it new and fresh. So that is it for today. That is our quick 15 minute let's plant a tree project that turned into a three hour ordeal. ordeal is a good word. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.